Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Head of Hotels, Airbnb, and CEO Hotel Tonight, Sam Shank. In discussion with Skift, Executive Editor, Founding Director, Dennis Shaw. Got a new title. Dennis. Hey, Sam. Thanks for being here. You were uh, here our very, for our very first Skift Forum in New York, so... It's um, great to be back. And my, how it's grown. <laughs> And uh, please don't forget your questions uh, for the end. Sam, what a day to show up. This morning, Airbnb announced it intends to become a public company uh, next year. And yesterday it announced that it had done um, a billion dollars in revenue in Q2, has seven million listings, sets up really nice for an IPO, no? And Sam, he can't talk about IPOs. Uh, you know, that's not allowed. So being the nice guy uh, that I am, I'll have to ask Sam, direct listing or IPO? <laughs> Let's have a moment. Good try, of, good try. Let's have a moment of silence for Sam. <laughs> so um, before we go ahead, let's go back. Most of you are familiar with Hotel Tonight. It uh, arrived on the scene in 2010. It was mobile only. It was... It is an exquisite app, but it was the fast, at that time, it was the fastest app, the fastest way to book a hotel room on earth. Four taps and you're in. I remember uh, it spurred legions of copycats. I remember uh, Booking Holdings came out with a uh, tonight only thing and it took like 30 taps to book a hotel. Acquired by Airbnb this year. So tell us a little bit about the journey. It has been a journey. Uh, that is that is a great word to describe it. And I, actually, I, I wanted to. I was thinking about the early days of Hotel Tonight and the part that you played in this, which was one of uh, our first. Actually, our first big break uh, in the press came when you wrote a story for the USA Today. Uh -huh. And this is I explained to the team. They don't believe me that people would get a printed copy of the USA Today on their doorstep uh, at every hotel. <laughs> they're like, "What is this dead tree thing going?" On? Anyway, so we're dating ourselves. We're dating ourselves, yeah. but it was on the cover, um, and it that day we doubled our bookings, and then it was a new plateau. So this was even before you were at Skift, I believe. Right. Uh, and so, uh, so thank you for that, and it, it's always a, a good memory um, of uh, those first years of all the breaks that we could get. But yeah, it's been a journey. Um, but there it's were been, some hiccups along the way. A lot of hiccups, like a lot of mistakes. Uh, did you know more right than than wrong at the end of the day, um, but at you know, what, what was motivating for me in the early days is I wanted to build a product that people and a service and a brand that people loved and they loved to love it. And backstage I was, you know, hearing from a few people about how the, their Hotel Tonight story and it is still so motivating for me and for mm -hmm. the team. Um, and that we were able to build that and bring that to the world is an absolute privilege. Uh, and really the, the journey continues, but has been already a, a huge success because of that. Nice. So it's funny, I remember running t into you randomly on the street in Manhattan about six weeks ago, and you were on your way to talk to some startups. So I said to you, Sam, what are you gonna tell them? He said, don't be a startup. <laughs> and he was joking, I think. Um, but, but what are some of the lessons for startups, travel startups in particular, that, that you can impart? Yeah, I, I think if I didn't say it, I meant to say don't do a travel startup. Okay. Um, <laughs> Two startups. I love startups. <laughs> Travel startups very, very hard, um, and uh, harder than especially in general, especially B two C. And the yeah. reasons are that I mean, it's taken me 15 years of doing three of them. I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess, or uh, just travel post mistakes. deal base, travel post deal base, and then hotel tonight. Right. The, the issue is that low frequency of use is what it comes right. down to. So from a, to get a consumer to switch services or to use your service is incredibly hard. And you have to do something that is very different than anything else that's out there, plus better. So mm -hmm. that's what I tell all consumer startups is be not only better, because it's easy to see, like I'm gonna build a better mousetrap, but you have to be different. You have to completely- And it has to be something. really better. Really better, but really different. So when we started Hotel Tonight, it was same day only, it was mobile only, which was very weird back then. Mm -hmm. um, very unusual. Um, our website just said go download the app in the App Store. Um, you'd only book one night at a time. We only showed three results. There were all these things that were just strikingly different mm -hmm. that made us better as well for the specific use case. Mm -hmm. But it helped people understand that this is something that uh, I need to pay attention to. This is something that, oh, and we had much better deals. Um, and, uh, and we still do. Um, 
and it helped the virality of the product by being different. And that um, frequency issue has killed so many startups. So many companies have tried to cater to both locals and travelers because of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a much better strategy, actually, because mm -hmm. locals have 50 weeks a year where they're local um, to shop and use your service, whereas when you're, you're doing it for travelers, it's two weeks a year and just a few purchases at a time. Incredibly hard. Right. Uh, let's go to the video. Hotel life is the best. Especially when you daily drop. Daily what? Hotel tonight's daily drop lets you unlock an amazing deal once a day. The Daily Drop gave you an amazing deal on this hotel? <sighs> you might not want to use that other book inside again. Yeah, no kidding. That's disgusting, how much I paid you. Deals so good, you'll be sorry you missed them. Visit hoteltonight.com or get the app to unlock your Daily Drop once a day. So it's interesting. This, this ad has been running since August 1st while you were under uh, the Airbnb umbrella, so they're con continuing to promote the Hotel Tonight brand. Uh, I think I, I saw on iSpot TV, it looked like uh, you've spent about $100,000 on this since August 1st. Not a lot. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, we've spent a lot more than that on this campaign um, okay. to promote Daily Drop, which is our uh, unique proprietary ephemeral deal format where mm -hmm. you can unlock it once a day. I'd say that uh, stepping back, the Hotel Tonight brand is going to continue. The service is going to continue within Airbnb. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a portfolio of brands approach. And that's because Hotel Tonight means something different than Airbnb. Hotel Tonight is hotels only. It is for spontaneous travelers, for same day in particular, but also last minute travelers. And it is uh, a mobile first product. And right. so the brand has different emotions associated with it and use cases associated with it versus Airbnb, which is the end-to-end -end travel platform, which is uh, more of the considered trips, longer stays. I have a few questions about this whole um, integration and identity thing. But first, our tourism reporter, Rosie Spinks, based in London, she's got a beef with you, Sam. Uh -oh. And that, Rosie, I'm asking it, and that beef is she likes Hotel Tonight, but, and what she likes about it is, it is it's curated. You know, there's, you can choose from about 10, 12 hotels. But now you go on to Airbnb, you gotta wade through yurts and igloos and RVs, stay in my RV tonight, you know. And it's somewhat of a mess. So how do you, um, how do you uh, what's, what's the word, uh, blend those? Well, I, I think this is a great illustration of why it's nice to have two brands and two products. So mm. you have people that prefer a curated lodging selection. Mm -hmm. um, that's Hotel Tonight. There's a lot of people that prefer to see everything all in one place, mm. um, which is what we're working on and what my team in particular is working on at Airbnb is bringing hotels into that. And so you can see everything, more choice, more selection, filters that can help you narrow that down, personalization to bring you what you want without having to use the filters. Um, and yeah, that all in one place is, is a value proposition, maybe not to Rosie, but very many other people. Sorry, Rosie. Um, it seems to me like separately, Hotel Tonight and Airbnb have, have an identity problem. Hotel Tonight is now 100 days, right? You could book uh, out to 100 days, it's no longer tonight. And Airbnb, what people really liked about it is it used to be about a local experience. You know, the host sat with you at the kitchen table and told an anecdotes about the destination. I recently stayed in an Airbnb in Chicago and my host was in Boston. It was a real estate company. They answered my questions very fast, but it doesn't have the local feel anymore. It is uh, about giving people choice of what type of lodging is right, right for them. I think that brands are interesting. Hotel Tonight is, uh, the tonight could mean book for tonight. It could mean stay tonight. It can be metaphorical, um, which is what we've done. And we've been very successful at expanding our booking window um, beyond the tonight. Um, but in Airbnb, like they did a pivot very early on to move beyond airbeds. So uh, they were successful there as well. Speaking about moving on, you know, moving beyond airbed. So now you're head of uh, hotels for Hotel Tonight. And it seems like the hotel listings on there are, um, it can be very confusing. So for example, I found a listing uh, for the Park Central New York. And the listing says, hosted by Park Central New York. I mean, when do you have 
a hotel that's hosted by someone. Or some of the listings say, um, uh, hosted by uh, Joe Schmo, you know, he's the general manager. Um, so it, it seems kind of messy. The, 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 and that so, Airbnb is, is sort of afraid to admit that it's, po it's, host it's uh, listing hotels now. I don't think that we're at all afraid to, to mention that. We've done a, a number of announcements about how successful hotels have been on Airbnb, um, despite the fact that the platform was built for homes and built for a homes host. And so what I'm doing and my team and working with a lot of other teams at Airbnb are doing is building out the hotel category on Airbnb. Right. And we are very excited of the progress we're making. Uh, we are excited about what we're going to bring to the world. It's going to be, I'm really, really fired up about it. Um, more to come on that, and we'll make sure you're, you're the first to know, one of the first people to know, Dennis. So um, if, if you're a uh, hotel that participates in Hotel Tonight, you have a choice uh, whether to be on Hotel Tonight only or to be on um, Airbnb as well. How does that work? Why would I want to be on one rather than the other? Well, I think you'd want to be on both uh, okay. is the ultimate uh, reason. And, and that's because we, uh, we have a, a very supplier-friendly approach. We've always had that at Hotel Tonight in terms of really about generating incremental revenue for our hotels. And that started with when we did same day and unlocked same day. So the rooms that were empty could now be filled with mobile guests uh, that uh, that were looking for a place to stay, but that may not have even stayed in a hotel, might have gone home or stayed with a friend. Um, so incrementality is something we focus on a lot, and that's going to be a, a key tenant uh, and pillar of the work that we're doing on Airbnb hotels, is to be supplier friendly and deliver incremental bookings, not cannibalizing existing bookings, right. but incremental bookings to our hotel partners, and be the a really, really incredible distribution partner is our, our first goal for hotels. Are some hotels, though, telling you, I just want to be in a hotel tonight, and why? I mean, um, is there a difference in the ROI between the two platforms for a hotel? You know, I, I haven't. Uh, we, it's too early to, to say those conversations uh, mm -hmm. are taking place or not. Um, there's, there's a lot of fundamental work that we're doing um, to make the product and make the platform ready for hotels. And again, really excited about it. One of the other things that we'll see is that we're going to be able to merchandise hotels or we're going to offer merchandising to hotels that they've never seen before, certainly not on a third party what, site. What does that mean uh, well, concretely? So concretely, I, and it leverages the strengths of Airbnb in terms of design and storytelling and local authentic experiences is that we want to reflect that for hotels that want to tell their own story about okay how they work with the communities, uh, the, the local um, connections that they're making with their communities, um, as well as like what makes them very different and what makes them special as places. And we are going to be providing, I think, the best merchandising for that that has ever been seen. Hmm. Uh, speaking of conversations, it seems all, you know, nothing in life is inevitable, but it seems almost inevitable that the uh, big chains, or at least some of their properties, will a few years from now, be on Airbnb. What kind of conversations are you having with, you know, major hotel chains, and 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 what are they telling you? We are focused on uh, for on Airbnb now on independent boutique lifestyle, independent hotels, right. um, and that is our focus. There are lots of them. Um, they fit very well with the Airbnb mission with our ethos, and that's our focus right now. Um, on Hotel Tonight, we do have a, a wide selection of properties because our value proposition is open the app, push a button, get a place to stay, push three buttons, um, right. and, uh, and get a place to stay. So we do have chain hotels there. So just as Hotel Tonight expanded from tonight only to 100 days out, I got to believe that Airbnb is going to expand from boutique hotels into larger hotels to um, give consumers more choice. And hotels are talking about, you know, we need to, you know, some will say privately, we need to find a way to work with Airbnb. So what's up with that? Well, I'm glad they're saying that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'd say never say never, uh, but that is not our focus right now. What do you think of all the overlap that's happening in the hospitality industry? Accor has short-term rentals. Marriott has a new platform. OYO is investing in um, vacation rentals. You're investing in OYO. Um, how does, it's, it's a tangled web. How does that, uh, how does impact, that impact the business? 
You know, I think that there's always been a lot of um, partnership and, and collaboration and industry, yep. 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 And, uh, and relationships. Um, like it's, it's a big market. It's a complex market. It's uh, one where um, I, it's been actually very validating, I think, and, and exciting for us to see others embrace short-term rentals um, because it, it says that this category is real. We've known it's real for a long time at Airbnb, right. and it, having others come in uh, is, is more proof of that. And Google has launched vacation rentals. Now, does, does Hotel Tonight participate in Google Hotels? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, but Airbnb doesn't participate in uh, Google vacation rentals. So do you see that happening? Uh, it's not the area that I'm focused on, um, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm sure it's a question you're going to have to deal with. I'll, let, I'll tell them to let you know, <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> Good. Um, who's the biggest threat to Airbnb? Is it Booking.com or Google? The uh, You'd think it'd be Booking.com. The competitive landscape yeah. is, uh, is something that I can't discuss. OK. More IPO stuff. Um, what surprised you the most about showing up at Airbnb, getting, you know, working for Airbnb after so many years, um, you know, working for startups. So how to, I've, I've learned to be an employee again or a uh, recovering CEO or all of the above. The, uh, it's been really great. Uh, there's so much opportunity there. Uh, the, the biggest thing that we were always struggling with at Hotel Tonight was the audience size. Um, right. we've, had, we've had a product that we believed in that others love. Um, we have great hotel partners, really great fenced rates and, uh, and programs to get people the, the best hotel at the right price, like Daily Drop. It's always been hard to, for us to get the audience. Right. Airbnb has this massive audience in 190 countries or more than that, and hundreds of millions of people that come to the platform. And it's so that it's mind blowing the scale of the business. Yep. Um, it was one thing that I saw. The other was that there's a lot of talk about the mission of Airbnb and a, uh, a lot of external talk about that. And internally, it's really inspiring for me and the team to see how much that not only is, is talked externally, but talked internally. And that's also something that we have never had at, at Hotel Tonight. Um, our mission was to make the world a more spontaneous place, right. which is great. Um, but Airbnb's mission is to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere. So to make the world a better place through travel. And they've actually done it and are doing it right now every day. And it is incredibly inspiring and humbling to be part of that mission and, right. uh, and drives us forward. Do you think Airbnb really has a, you know, a, competitive, a competitive advantage over um, Booking.com and, and Expedia in terms of uh, the direct traffic it gets and marketing? I mean, Expedia and Booking Holdings are spe spending billions every year on Google to, uh, to, for customer acquisition. Um, when, when it, does Airbnb, um, does it not face that hurdle, or will it eventually have to play really big in Google as well? I, I, can't talk, or I can't tell you about the others, but I can tell you that I really like our hand of cards right now. You're, you like what? I like where we sit right now in the industry, mm -hmm. our hand of cards, yeah. Sure. How did the, um, how did the acquisition of Hotel Tonight actually um, come together with Airbnb? Is that something, I mean, it was announced a few months ago, but I mean, were you talking to them two years ago, or, or how did it actually happen? Well, the, the story goes back to even before Hotel Tonight, when I came across Airbnb in its first year, and I was really impressed. I reached out, I was running DealBase at the time, and right. there's not many other... You were also investing in a lot of startups as well, investing, right? Doing Angel investing. Investor. And, um, and I... Uh, was not an investor, I'm not an investor in, in Airbnb, but right. I reached out to Brian and just CEO to CEO in the Bay Area, and I, we had coffee and got to know each other. It turns out that we both have a love for design, we both have a love for great product experiences, we both are obsessed about the customer and the front line and what, it's, uh, what the customer sees, and, and I went to the Roush apartment, uh, which is the, the, where the whole thing started, um, or one of the first offices. It's now, the, the, the color of the Airbnb logo is a color, proprietary color called Roush, for example. So huh. I, um, uh, I, and I went there, it was like 20 people, and I was uh, just 
completely blown away and I was like, this feels so historical. Um, so anyway, I fast forward, Brian and I kept in touch. We, we'd get coffee every, every once in a while and then it, at some point we said, hey, this, this makes sense mm -hmm. um, and let's do this. And, and then we did. Nice. Let's go to some questions. Um, your startup advice is to be unique, but it feels like Airbnb is becoming less unique as it adds new types of offerings. How do you reconcile that? Well, I, I, I don't want to speak for the overall strategy of, of Airbnb, um, but what I, I can say that the, this is analogous to when we expanded our booking window. Um, and we went to from one day to seven days to 100 days, and people said, oh, you're not different anymore because what you're doing is, is now what everybody else is doing. And I said, what I want to define different as is what we choose to do, not what we, we restrict ourselves from doing. So the daily drop ephemeral deal. Nobody else has that. Mm -hmm. um, geo rates, which are location specific deals. The curation that we bring. The editorial voice on Hotel Tonight. All of those, and you can think about what makes Airbnb unique um, beyond the limitations of only one category of inventory. Mm -hmm. And you can make similar comparisons there, I think. Those limitations will undoubtedly be going away. I mean, everyone, know, oh, yeah. everyone thinks that Airbnb will be expanding into flights and, and all kinds of well, stuff. Next Airbnb year. has said that we want to be the end to end and we're going to be the end to end travel company. And to do that, we are going to be expanding and offering more choice. And that's great for the consumer. It's great for hotel partners. It's great for our hosts. Um, and uh, it's great for you know, us supporting our mission. We have a question about the Airbnb loyalty program. Um, I remember there was a lot of buzz. I don't recall the, the official's name, but Airbnb last year or two years ago um, hired someone who had been instrumental in uh, launching Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of buzz about the loyalty program. So what happened to it? Where, where is it? Um, I can't talk about uh, Super Guest, which is the, the name of the program, right. but, um, but I can talk about the Hotel Tonight loyalty program if you want to go down that road. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's called HT Perks, though. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, my, the, the person I, re uh, I report to, he's the president of Homes, Greg Greeley, right. and he was at Amazon for many years right. and was instrumental in some of the programs that led to Prime, um, and I can tell you, like, it's, it's amazing what that program has done for Amazon, and that's not, it's something we talk about. Right. Um, will Airbnb become just another OTA as it adds hotels and experiences? Airbnb um, came out uh, yesterday, uh, actually today, and said uh, something like, in certain of its cities, something like 10% uh, of the people who book homes are also booking experiences, so it's a a rising business. Mm -hmm. But what about, is it gonna become just another OTA? I certainly think that if, uh, if we do, we won't have done our job, so uh, I certainly hope not. Sam, our job is done. Okay. Thank Dennis. you. Thank you.